Hey folks, this is Pastor Jim from Cross Point Church in Bettendorf, Iowa. This Sunday we're going to dive into our study of the book of Judges. It picks up right where the book of Joshua left off. It begins with the death of Joshua and spans about 400, 450 years or so um, to, the, to the time of the monarchy of the nation of Israel, beginning with um, King Saul. Throughout that time we'll see these cycles of behavior uh, of the people of Israel. It begins with sort of a season of marginal obedience where they, you know, they'll, they'll sort of obey God but they won't quite do all the things that, he, that he's asked of them. They won't drive out the inhabitants of the land and, and they kind of cozy up to them too much until finally they descend into idolatry and basically look like all of the rest of the surrounding nations and uh, until finally God brings them under uh, captivity of the surrounding nations and then God raises up a, a leader or a, a judge who then brings deliverance and victory and uh, then they again sort of settle into a season of obedience and the cycle will repeat itself throughout this 600 this uh, 400 year period of time now the first few chapters uh, lays out themes and patterns that we'll see throughout the book of Joshua. And there's two stories that um, are emblematic of, this, uh, of, of these themes. The first one is uh, that of Adonai Bezek, a powerful Canaanite king whose city-state is destroyed by the tribes of uh, Judah and Simeon. And as they're carrying this um, decadent evil king away, uh, they cut off his thumbs and his uh, big toes. And uh, as they're carrying him off to captivity to Jerusalem, uh, uh, he confesses to God that he's done the same thing to 70 other kings. And it shows us the complexity and the chaos and the violence of that culture. Um, this is the way they practice war, and it seems unnecessary and violent to our 21st century uh, Western sensibilities, and yet this is how they practice war in that culture. And Israel was no different. The people of God found themselves in this place where they had to exercise war pretty much the way everybody else did, whether it was right or wrong. And in the midst of all of that instability, that chaos, the violence, um, we see a picture of hope, a picture of redemption, because it's there that we're reintroduced to somebody that we met in Joshua. And this is the person, a man named Othniel, who was the very first judge, the first of 15 judges um, in, the, in this period of the judge's history. And uh, you re may remember Othniel. He was uh, uh, promised the daughter of Caleb, her name is Aksaw, if he would deliver the region of Deber of the inhabitants. And because of his military expertise, his willingness, his determinedness to, to be obedient to God, he brings freedom to that region, and he's given uh, Caleb's daughter, Akshah, as his wife. Um, and, and then he would then go on to become a great uh, judge, even though he gets very little press. There's only a few pa uh, paragraphs written about him. He was arguably one of the very best judges uh, that the nation of Israel had. And it reminds us that in the midst of all of the chaos of culture, all of the instability, things that make us feel uncertain, there is always hope. Hope always reigns in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't find our hope in a man. Uh, Othniel was a good judge, but we don't place our hope in a man or in a system of politics or um, a system of thought or those kinds of things. We place our hope in Jesus Christ because he's going to build his church and the very gates of hell are not going to prevail against that. We have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be hopeful for. After all, we've never been asked to cut off anybody's thumbs or big toes, have we? Um, we're going to talk more about the hope that we have in Jesus um, this Sunday at 9, 15, and 11. And I hope you'll make it uh, here and worship with us. I know you'll be glad that you did. Thanks for listening. I'll see you then.